Hi there tech heads. Many of you out there like myself run your own home lab environment. There's no better way to become familiar with a product or products uh, than actually getting your own hands on time. And obviously you don't want to be doing this in a production environment. That's why running your own small lab environment at home or at work is a fantastic solution to upskill yourself and also to give you the opportunity to have a bit of fun with these uh, amazing products that we have available to us these days. However, one of the biggest limitations you'll uh, quite often come across, and those of you running your labs at the moment will uh, uh, would have definitely come across this no doubt time and time again, is the amount of physical memory you have available to you uh, in your server hosts. So whether you're running a vSphere um, or virtualization or, or a vSphere environment, for example, the memory is always the first thing to be consumed by your VMs. So what I predominantly use, I use a combination of white boxes in my labs, but I also run a few of these as well, which are these, the HP Micro Server. So the latest model for the HP Micro Servers, the N. Uh, 40L uh, that has the 1.5 gigahertz processor. Um, I was quite an early adopter of these, so I'm running the slightly older, the N36L, uh, which has got uh, the slightly slower processor. But apart from that, the rest of it's pretty much the same. So by default, HP claim that the most memory you can run in one of these little servers is eight gigabytes of memory. But with the availability and the reduction in price these days of eight gigabyte DIMMs, uh, you can pick up um, 16 gig uh, memory packs such as this. This is two 8 gigabyte DIMMs here from Kingston uh, that I use in these. Um, you can actually take one of these little microservers up to 16 gigabytes. So what I'm going to do here today for you is I'm going to take you through the installation of the DIMMs. It's very straightforward stuff but I'll take you through it anyway. And then we'll uh, install vSphere 5.1 and I'll prove to you that this little box here that offers very good value for money. The um, here in the UK at the time of recording this, you can pick up one of these uh, without the memory, of course, uh, for around about £100. So that's pretty good value. Uh, so if you just want to spin up your own little home lab environment, uh, or use it for something else, that offers quite good value for money. So I'm going to take you uh, through the installation process. We're going to install vSphere 5.1, and um, I'll prove to you that uh, one of these little boxes can run 16 gigs. So here we go, let's install the 16 gig uh, memory DIMM pack here into the micro server. As you can see, very small form factor here, which is great. Uh, obviously it doesn't take up much of a footprint in your um, lab environment, whether that be at home or at work. But one of the downsides is to actually get into here, as you can imagine, uh, everything's very compact. So it's quite fiddly to get in uh, to swap out the memory. So what we'll do is first thing, to point out, on the inside door here, you've got a small hex key. Now that hex key fits into two screws uh, at the front here. Now, they may be finger tight already, in which case you can just unscrew them with the fingers. But uh, if you have trouble, uh, use the little uh, tool which is on the inside door there. Now, this is going to take a while to do, so what we're going to do is speed things up. And there we have it, the uh, system board is out. Uh, like I say, it can be a little bit fiddly and the one thing to do is remember where all the cables went because otherwise you can have a lot of difficulty when you go to put everything back. As you can see, only two DIMM slots on this, so the maximum memory configuration that HP claim you can have are two four gigabyte DIMMs, which is what I have in here at the moment. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop those out like so. And then it's time to insert my memory pack here. So what I'm going to include along the bottom here, along the bottom of the screen, is the uh, model number that I use here and I've found to work. Uh, like I say, um, it's from Kingston. So we're going to speed this uh, step up again. So I'm going to install the memory and we're going to slot everything back in again. And there we have it folks. So that's uh, the uh, 16 gigs now installed into the micro server there. Like I say, it can be a little bit of a fiddle. Um, you may want to consider using an anti-static strap on your wrist. Um, though, uh, you know, for non-production stuff such as this from my own lab, I tend not to bother too much. Which I guess is a little bit bad, but uh, there we go. So the memory I put in there, the memory that the microserver will take, is uh, DDR3 ECC memory, or error checking and correction memory. Uh, this is essential. If it's not DDR3 ECC, 
uh, UDIM memory, it won't work. Uh, so it's PC, uh, PC3, um, 800 uh, megahertz. Uh, maximum memory that he uses there, but uh, like I say, um, some people have found particular brands to work, other ones not so much. Uh, a couple of the scenarios, for example, one of the scenarios in particular is people will install it, it'll run, but after a period of time they find that the server locks up and there's symptoms such as this. Uh, like I say, I've stuck with this memory because I've found it uh, to work for me. So the next thing to do from here is put the old memory away. And uh, we are going to hook this up to a monitor, a keyboard, and uh, I'll show you the, um, that it can identify and recognize the 16 gigs that I've just placed in there. So with the memory now installed, what I've done is I've taken this USB key, I've installed VMware vSphere 5.1, the latest release, onto here. Uh, I use USB keys quite a bit, the reason being it gives me great flexibility here in my lab. So if I want to try a particular version of VMware vSphere, uh, I have a number of different USB keys with different versions installed in there. So rather than have it get the CD out, install it onto the hard disk every time, I can literally just take the uh, relevant USB key plug it into the uh, server here, power it up, and then I've got that uh, particular version of uh, VMware vSphere to use. So what I'm going to do here, open up the front here. There's a uh, small USB port right in the front here. I'm just going to insert that into there. Like so. Let's close the door up. And then what I'm going to do is power on the, um, the micro server here. So it's going to be uh, it's set up to boot up off of the uh, USB port. And rather than have you sit through all of that, uh, I'm going to speed this, uh, this part up so it gets to the, um, uh, the, the, the status or the loaded screen. Uh, so you can see that VMware vSphere 5.1 uh, identifies the 16 gigabytes of memory. And there we have it. We have now installed successfully VMware vSphere ESXi for version 5.10. So you can see there the 16 gigabytes of memory when just installed is showing perfectly fine. Uh, this is the older microserver model and you can tell that because it's the uh, N36L processor in there. The latest model of the microserver, pretty much identical but has the N40L processor in there which is a little bit faster. But not too much difference between the two. So now let's jump into the vSphere client and take a look at the memory indicated there. So here we are, we're inside the vSphere clients now and uh, we're looking underneath the summary tab. In the general section you can see that the ESXi host has identified the underlying hardware as a ProLine microserver, as you'd expect. And uh, under CPU cores it can uh, see the two CPUs running at 1.3 GHz. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the fact it's 1.3 GHz indicates that it is the earlier model of the microserver or the N36L uh, processor that's used in there. If it was the latest model at the time of recording this video that is uh, uh, using the N40L model which is running slightly faster at 1.5 gigahertz but more importantly because that's the focus of this video is, is around the memory and on the right hand side of the screen here under resources you can see that the ESXi host can see the full complement of 16 gigabytes of memory now 16 gigabytes uh, you can do quite a bit with that I generally find that I can run between Anywhere, just depending on the size of the VM and uh, you know the amount of memory I have allocated to that VM, but generally I would run between probably about five, possibly eight VMs uh, in in that much memory space there. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of other sort of vSphere uh, functionality that comes into play there that uh, you know your memory over subscription um, and what have you that that will allow you to perhaps uh, run a few more VMs on there. Uh, but at that point, when you start getting that many VMs on there, obviously it's about memory. But a number of other aspects come into play, uh, such as the CPU. And admittedly, these aren't the fastest CPUs in the world in these microservers. But if you're not obviously running this in a production environment, you know if you're just using it for you know educational purposes. Purposes, uh, you're not going to be running any VMs with really heavy workloads on there. So the CPU uh, utilization wouldn't be that great. But obviously, the more VMs you add on to the server, uh, the more utilization generally you're going to see there, as well as things like uh, memory consumption as well. So, anyway, that's it. I hope you found this video of use. Uh, call past techhead.co on a regular basis. I'll have more videos um, based around uh, VMware.
Square vSphere and uh, my lab environment, uh, the various uh, pieces of hardware that I use that uh, use in the lab. And um, I hope you found this of use. Well, thanks very much.